I was recently asked a question. What is the difference between a splint and a night guard, and then also a deprogrammer and then an orthotic? I find that this is one of the most confusing and misunderstood concepts in dentistry, and not only for patients, but also for doctors, dentists. So I'm posting this video from one of our Platinum Member Study Club, since we had a great discussion about this topic with some of the other dentists that regularly attend our study sessions. So here's the video. A splint, the definition of the word splint, what does it mean to splint something? Like to splint tie together, splint to support. Teeth. Is it support? Uh, no, it's to prevent movement. Right. It's to basically lock hold it into something place in so place. It doesn't do something else. It doesn't move out of place. Yeah. So typically, splinting in the past has been used in perio when you had a loose tooth. Mm hmm. You splinted the next tooth. It to the next tooth and then compromise both. You're using a strong tooth to support a, a broken tooth. tooth, but at the same time, now you're weakening the strong guy. A night guard is a guard at night, right? A guard at night guards you from what? Breaking the teeth. Right. So you, it's used in what patients? Think about it. Which type of patient Bruxing. gets it? In? Right. So if you're bruxing, you're grinding, your teeth are getting worn, so you're putting a guard in to prevent you from wearing your teeth. You're not stopping the, the wearing. Habits. Yes, yes. You're just preventing the teeth from broken getting down. broken or worn down, right? Yeah. So what is the difference between a splint and a night guard? Well, it's the purpose. Yes. You could have the same appliance looking thing. So when patients will say, well, I've had many splints, you may have had many splints, but they may have been designed for different things, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of like, so the best analogy I have for patients, if I need a pair of shoes, mm -hmm. I need a splint. What are you doing with the shoes? If I give you high heels, but you wanted them to run, how effective are you gonna be at running? Right. You're probably gonna injure yourself. Same thing with a splint. If I give you a deprogrammer, which is meant to do what? To deprogram the muscles. So they do what? They stop firing. Reduce activity. Yes. Right? In a person that has healthy joints, it does that if you are a yeah. clencher. But if I give you a deprogrammer for somebody who's got joint degeneration, then I will injure you more the same way I would injure you by making you run with high heels. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. A splint is not a splint is not a splint, the same way a shoe is not a shoe is not a shoe. Mm -hmm. And that's the analogy I give to all patients, and patients understand that. So yeah. just because you've had seven splints that you brought to me, now let's show you what they all did. Yeah. Now, a lot of them are done incorrectly because they're done by a lab who doesn't understand what the problem is for the patient. They just yeah. slap a bunch of acrylic in, right? Mm -hmm. So the difference between those appliances is clear. Now, what is an orthotic in a shoe? Uh, it's going to support the it's arch. Going to, it's going it's, to give, it guide. The orthotic guides the, let's say I have a leg orthotic. My leg is like this, but I went put an orthotic, it's straight. To reposition. Correct. The balance and position by compensating for what's missing. Okay. Right? So what an orthotic does is it compensates for whatever is wrong or missing. So when you have one leg shorter than the other, then the shorter leg, we don't chop off the foot to make you balanced. Like we do in dentistry, let's just chop off that tooth or take it out, it's in the way. No, what we do is we take the leg that is missing something, as in height, or it's bent or whatever, and we add something to correct the position, the balance, and align the body. When you align the body, that's the whole thing, the whole purpose of the orthotic. Yeah. So what an orthotic is, when it's well adjusted and designed, and you're gonna see it when we go through the slides, because as we go through each tiny movement, each tiny slide in every direction, every angle, you're gonna start to see how teeth shape each other into anatomy. And when you see that, and when you're fully balanced, that's when the bite is balanced and the muscles just simply relax. Because when you put somebody who is like this, right? So, uh, sorry, I'm doing it wrong. Like this, right? What's gonna happen on this side? Everything is squished mm -hmm. and stuck. 
what's happening on this side. I already feel it. I'm stretched. Mm -hmm. This is stretched. Mm -hmm. Everything's in pain. I'm trying to balance. My back's balancing. My shoulders are balancing. Even my arms are coming into play. Mm -hmm. When you put the orthotic and you straighten me out, everything is bad. The muscles let go over time. Mm -hmm. You don't do anything with the muscles. You just leave them and they compensate. As you relax, as you start walking evenly, all of a sudden, this is not stretched anymore, this elongates, and now you're walking evenly, everything. So we don't screw around with the muscle. So that's the challenge when you're talking to patients about night guards versus the programmers versus orthotics. Mm -hmm. I can make a night guard in minutes, mm -hmm. right? Try it in, make sure it fits, bite, even, yep, yeah, go. But an orthotic means every tiny movement has to be dealt with. So it's like this. If I chop off your right arm and you're right-handed, and I give you a hook, that's a night guard. If I give you a robotic arm that does everything your brain tells it to do precisely, it's not that's an orthotic. It's still not human arm. Mm 